М1 Глобал. Уважаемые поклонники смешанных боевых единоборств и исторического фехтования, представляем вашему вниманию бой по правилам исторического фехтования. В синем углу Рейджа спортсмен из города Калининград представляет клуб «Западная башня». Встречайте! Евгений Беденко! В красном углу Рейджа спортсмен из клуба «Боярд» представляет город-герой Москва. Встречайте! Иван Спортсмен в синего рейджа представляет янтарный запад России, город Калининград. Спортсмену 31 год, вес 74,8 кг, рост 176 сантиметров. Профессиональный рекорд в семи поединках всего одно поражение. Победитель турнира «Белый замок». Серебряный призер чемпионата мира «Битва наций». Победитель международных зарубежных турниров по историческому фехтованию. Рыцарь из города Калининград представляет клуб «Западная башня». Аплодисменты Евгений Беденко! И его соперник в красном углу. Ему 32 года, вес 75,5 килограммов, рост 173 сантиметра, профессиональный рекорд. 11 побед, всего два поражения. Он двухкратный чемпион России, вице-чемпион турнира «Белый замок», призер чемпионата мира «Битва наций», победитель турниров «Рыцарский вызов» и «Поле Куликова». Иван Васильев, Боярд, город Москва! Уважаемые рыцари, защищая честь вашей прекрасной дамы, помните о судье, он без оружия. Человек ослепительного благородства Вячеслав Киселев, Санкт-Петербург, Россия! Спасибо, Сергей Итак, рыцари, правила помним, не нарушаем. Работаем три раунда по три минуты. Колющий удар, запрещенный удар, в парк запрещены. Внимательно слушаем мои команды, беремся честно. Ударили ничами, щитами. Разошлись по углам. Судья, время. Готов? Готов? Бой! And we're back, ladies and gentlemen, for a fight between Eugene Bedenko and Ivan Vasiliev. And this is the first fight of the official M1 Medieval project. This is the ninth fighting project started by M1. It's three three-minute rounds. It's always a feeling out process in the beginning before strategy is really taken into effect. Denko in the red is a welterweight who represents the ninth fight club, Zapandia, Zapandia Basha. For people that have not yet figured out how to this out, uh, these are really real squirts. So we have to put the accent that the, the damage are very real. The armor that they're wearing are also very real. 
But interestingly enough, over the past 10 years, the armor's gotten lighter. So for someone who's well-trained and has the necessary stamina, apparently, and I've spoken to several of the knights uh, over the past few days, apparently they don't really feel the armor when it's on. And if you use it correctly, it actually minimizes any sort of trauma that you receive. They don't complain about all sorts of things like uh, general injuries that MMA fighters get, uh, ACL injuries, knee injuries, uh, hands, hand injuries. They rarely complain about such things. What they do complain about is if they don't use their helmet properly, there could be some trauma. ladies and gentlemen there are takedowns here there are shots you can punch you can elbow you can do all sorts of things and the fight can be finished whilst a lot of these fights do go to decision these two fighters in particular have had a history of finishing fights believe it or not in red ivan vasiv is the two-time russian champion won both 2013 and 14 he's the vice champion of white castle tournament and a multiple prize holder of the clash of nations and he holds an 11 and 2 professional record it should be noted that his opponent in the red, Eugene, is actually slightly less experienced. He holds a 6-1 record. But he's also won the Clash of Nations tournament where he's also a vice champion. So this is very interesting. Two Russian champions, and it's very clear that they're both very talented. The use of the sword, which is also blunt. You should note that it's a blunt instrument. We even see the sparks when they hit. Stop! Yeah, stop! That's the late three three minute rounds. for the second round after an entertaining first round of action. The crowd really enjoys watching these night fights. It's very new to them here, but they definitely enjoy it. He's a very spectacular. It's a special attraction. As you can see there, that there was a strike to the helmet, and to explain the point system a little better, strong strikes using the sword or the shield, if it hits the, if it hits the armor, the referee can award, and there's judges on the side, the referee can award a point. A takedown, as we saw in the last round, is worth five points. There are four judges at ringside judging it, and if, and if for any reason we end up with a draw, split between two, ju two judges on one side, two judges on the other, there is a fifth judge who decides who is the victim. You can see the fighters are a lot more comfortable now. They're getting a little fancier with their shots. Even as MT is spinning back kick. There was a spinning back kick, there was a spinning back fist earlier. It's getting very interesting now. It's surprising that he can pull up these moves even though they have those armors. I guess, as you were mentioning, that the uh, light armors are, are helping with those moves. But you still need some extreme stamina. You need to be extremely fit to be able to wear all that and still maneuver for like, nine minutes. It's just... It must be very difficult to breathe. Uh, with, uh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Years in, they're used to it. Many of these fighters have been have been fencing and doing all sorts of historical fencing for 10 to 15 years now. Many of them started in, in junior high, for instance. They take an interest in it, and then it just becomes a hobby to them. 
I think with the new popularity of, uh, for example, uh, characters like Game of Thrones or uh, uh, movies, uh, Lord of the Rings, I think maybe the sport is now going back. And uh, as we see, the level is pretty high, so it's impressive to see uh, here right now tonight in Moscow. Of course, it was M1 Global founder Vadim Finkelstein who came up with the idea to introduce M1 Medieval. After he joined forces with Artem last year, it was very interesting to see on M1 on his 50th birthday for M1 Global 50 it was the first night fight. That's when it took place, and it was it blew fans away at that point. So since then, he has decided to start up M1 Medieval, which. At this rate, we're going to be seeing more about eight to ten fights of this of this kind over the year, and over the coming years, we're going to start seeing weight classes develop and championship belts and all sorts of things. Believe it or not, at one point, it could become its own uh, its own faction, its own uh, affiliate of M1. This is the last and final round of this fight. While many might be watching this right now and not taking it very seriously, it should be noted that several of the top gyms in both St. Petersburg and Moscow have started to implement fencing into their, into the, incorporate fencing into preparation for their fighters. So MMA fighters, whether they are competing in M1 Medieval or not, which they generally will not be, will still be doing all sorts of fencing to work on their agility, stamina, dexterity, hand-eye coordination. Vasiliev successfully uh, attempted the takedown here. Referee stops them, stands them up. And that'll be the second one. If we're going on points, it looks like Evgeny is doing uh, the better here. Hand-eye coordination is just so impressive. Their, their ability to attack and defend at once, it's just very interesting to see. For a sport that's so foreign to us right now, it's just very fascinating. And then Cole landed a good shot to the head. Seems to be resting in the corner. Will Vasiliev take advantage of it? Bedenko seems really, really tired in this third round. Vasil looks like he's going to take advantage in the third round. You should not let him rest. You should, you should attack right now. Referee calls a stoppage. The gloves needs to be adjusted. And in the other corner, the, the cornerman is actually using the shield as a fan for Evgeny. I think this little pause will help both fighters gain some energy to finish this round. Oh, I'm sure they weren't complaining about the few seconds they got to rest there. It should be noted, ladies and gentlemen, that shield strikes to the face do count for the same points that a strike with a sword do. Bedenko just landed one of those shields attack. Vasiliev is moving forward. What a strike there. 
both fighters studying each other, trying to catch your breath. So what do you think, Yuri? Is this something that interests you? Something this you'd like to try? This is definitely not something I would like to try, but to watch a fight like this, for me, this is very entertaining. This is very special. I like uh, this medieval type of fighting. Um, I'm really, really happy that M1 is bringing this back. I think this is really spectacular for all the people watching at home and watching here in the audience. Oh, big knees here landed by uh, Vasilyev. Referee very to stop the action. As we're seeing, there's a lot of MMA strikes going on in this fight as well. Incorporating all sorts of elements, fencing, historical, uh, historical fencing and MMA. And this is the end of the round and the end of the fight. Uh, let's see what the judges have on their scorecards.